Hey everybody, welcome to episode 36 here in What About Therapy. I'm Enoch Fossum and I'm a certified mindfulness life coach. And I'm Austin Ivey and I'm certified in the basics of acceptance and treatment therapy. And we're both going to school to be marriage and family therapists. And today on the episode, we're going to be talking about cognitive fusion and cognitive diffusion and how it can help you in your life. So let's get right into it. Let's do it. All right. Welcome back to another episode, episode 36 to be exact. 36. We're almost to 40. Wow. It's kind of cool. I guess in a month, it's kind of far away, but... Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's four episodes, <laughs> but four weeks. That's a long time, but also not a long time. But yeah, anyways, as you heard in the intro, today we're talking about cognitive fusion, cognitive diffusion, kind of the polar opposites of each other. And it comes from some amazing literature, amazing books, mainly from The Confidence Gap, by Russ Harris. We've talked about him a lot on the podcast before. Yeah, last episode we talked about him a lot, actually. A ton, yeah. <laughs> we like, fangirl over him. <laughs> we, he's our obsession right now. Um, Enix listening to a book called The Confidence Gap by him, and I'm listening to... Well, you're reading it. I'm yeah, listening I'm to the audiobook of The Happiness Trap. So, Confidence Gap and The Happiness Trap. Very similar titles. Um, but they're both just gold mines. Amazing. Of just amazing one-liners and... Quotes, all types Quotes, of things. Quotes, paragraphs. The Exercises. whole book is just gold. So if you're listening, if you're into audiobooks or reading, or if you like self help books, then there would be at the top of my list of recommendations for self help yeah. books for sure. The audiobook is amazing. Like for both of them, I've listened to part of the Confidence Gap. So if you're not much of a reader, um, he narrates both of them. The actual author does. He has a nice Australian accent. So oh, it's actually nice to listen to. It's not some monotone paid actor. It's the actual author so he's very passionate about the things that he's talking about so that's like that's gonna be good mike i'd recommend both both words and audio yeah. so like really good stuff and so i guess we can just get right into it then yeah and before we start let's just kind of set a little base here austin and i have talked about cognitive behavioral therapy quite a bit on the podcast and those of you know we're not really the biggest fans of cbt i mean it's great it works for a lot of people but the more we're learning about acceptance and commitment therapy, the more that like we we're going more in that direction. With Absolutely. Act. And yeah. CBT, they focus on like your stinking thinking, right? And your the, ants. Yeah. And when we have a negative thought, it focuses on changing that thought into a positive one because thoughts control our emotions and the emotions or thoughts control the way we feel, the way we feel controls the way we act and so it all starts in your head and yes it's true that's true yeah yeah it all starts in your head for sure but the problem comes when you try to change those thoughts and that's what cbt is fully based around changing the thoughts and act focuses on not doing that because that can cause a lot of problems when you do tend to when you fight against those negative thoughts yeah, one of the I just thought of this analogy. Um, if CBT, if you were to put it in like let's say UFC for people who know what UFC is the Ultimate Fighting Wrestling Fighting Competition, if CBT was um, like if we think of that in that context of the UFC, then that would be getting into the ring with like Conor McGregor and fighting. <laughs> let's say Conor McGregor, your negative thoughts or the experiences you don't want to have, and you get in and you fight with them. That's what CBT teaches you to do: is to to kind of fight and to combat and to replace your negative thoughts and acceptance and commitment therapy is staying comfortably on the outside of the ring, watching your thoughts. Oh, watching your thoughts kind of fight each yeah, other. Watch your thoughts kind of fight each other back and forth. Um, <laughs> um, your thoughts going back and forth. You're watching the fight happen. Negative thoughts, positive thoughts going back and forth. And you're just watching from the outside and enjoying it or maybe not enjoying it very much. And, but that's okay because as we're going to talk about today and we've talked about multiple times, negative experiences, negative thoughts are not bad. They're just experiences to be had, not problems to be solved. So that's the kind of the premise. That's the framework, the background, whatever you want to call it, that we're going to go off today. Yeah. So let's start here. When you think of the word fusion, what do you usually think of? Usually think of, like I think of welding. Me too. Yeah. Like if you weld two things together. Shout out to my boy Noah Jocelyn. He does... Uh, welding. Oh, cool. <laughs> Welding's an art. It really is. Yeah. Just like any other like liberal art, it's really a cool thing. So Yeah, super cool. If you need stuff welded, 
let them know. I don't know how you get in contact with them, but find a way. Hey, find a way. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, so that's what I think of is I think of two pieces of metal being welded together or fused together. You can't take them apart. And we tend to get fused with our thoughts. And that can be a problem, whether that be negative or positive, which we're going to talk about. And you'll think, oh, well, wouldn't it be a good thing to fuse or stick with a positive thought? And it can be helpful for a time, but in the long run, it's not very workable and it's not not helpful yeah. at the end of the day. Exactly. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but... Um... We're going to talk mainly about fusing with negative thoughts in that context yeah. because that's more common. People get fused unhealthily to negative thoughts more often. But what fusion would look like to positive thoughts that turn into unhealthy behaviors would be like nar- narcissism, egocentrism, arrogance, ignorance, things that make you not a very enjoyable person yeah. um, towards prideful. other people. Very prideful, prideful person. Very yeah. prideful person. That's a good way to put it. And so whenever you fuse to any type of thought process or story that your brain tells you, that's when you get fused. And so I guess the actual definition, I guess not the definition, this is something that I just came up with from all my studies of, um, a, I almost said ACT, (laughs) acceptance (laughs) and commitment therapy, all the things that I've learned from ACT Mm. and the different courses that I've taken. Um, this is the kind of the definition that I thought of. So what is fusion? It's when we start to listen to the stories our brain tells us and believe them. We start to almost literally become our thoughts. This can lead to an overall feeling. This can lead to overall feelings of anxiety, depression, and all the other negative feelings and experiences no one wants to have. And so, another way to look at it is getting hooked to your thoughts. Mm-hmm. I'm sure, I know at least one person listens to this fishes a lot. And that's me, and also my good friend Stockton. <laughs> he listens to it all the time. So shout out to Stockton yeah. for listening all the time. Um, but fishermen or anyone who's been fishing or knows about fishing. Um, knows what it's like to hook a fish or if even most people know what that looks hook like yourself or hook yourself yeah i do that yeah. all the time i did that brutal last time i went fishing multiple times um but if you imagine yourself as a fish maybe you can close your eyes and imagine yourself as a fish in a river and you see what looks like a nice little juicy bug flowing mm. down the river and you're mm-hmm. like "Ooh, i'm hungry it's winter's ending i need a snack you're gonna eat this bug but it turns out psych it's a fly fisher named austin who's ready to catch you or and pull you in or Stockton, yeah, if you're listening, <laughs> or any other fly fisherman that is just trying to pull you into its trap, literally, I guess. And um, that negative thought or the negative thoughts that you have can be represented by the hook or the fly that traps you, that hooks you and pulls you along a path that you don't want to go on. Most fish, I would assume, don't want to be caught by fishermen, dragged into a net, pulled out of water, get a picture taken of them and then put back or eaten in some cases. And so think of that as the analogy that you're just sitting there in the stream, living your life and a hook comes in, you take it and it pulls you out of the water and typically isn't the best experience. And so you are the fish and the hook is your thoughts, thoughts that you get fused to. Any thought, positive or negative. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. And it can, if you believe it too much or if you get hooked by it, it will take you down a path that usually isn't in accordance to your values, the things that you care about most in life. Yeah. So that's what fusion is, and that's what it can kind of look like. That's what we're talking about today. Now, also, I forgot to mention at the beginning, a lot of this is going to come from the confidence gap, um, the content in this by Russ Harris. We'll link it down below if you want to go ahead and buy it, read it, get the sample, see if you like it. But, I mean, honestly... I can 99% guarantee you'll enjoy the book. Oh, I, I would give that and guarantee as well. Yeah, It's just, these are some of the best self-help books you're ever going to read in your entire life. And mm-hmm. it's great. Yeah, they aren't just like feel-good books. They're really going to help you implement these things in your life. It's really cool. Yeah, they're fire. So here, Russ Harris talks about how our brains have something called the reason giving. And I'm sure you can, I'll think of some reasons right now that maybe you don't want to listen to this podcast or your brain might have said, given you reasons that you don't want to read this book, read the confidence gap, read the happiness trap or read in general, cause it can take some time or so here are four, like four of the most common reasons that our brain tends to, to tell us like reasons why not to do something. So the first one is obstacles. Our minds point out all the obstacles and difficulties, difficulties that lie in our path and that's one that's was really 
common with me in my life early on, like in high school, is <clears throat> I would deal a lot with with obstacles. And the reason giving would be obstacles, like re- reasons why I couldn't do something, like why I can't go to football practice or why I can't do my homework or whatever it is, it would point out all the obstacles like, oh, my knee kind of hurts today or, oh, I could, I have something else going on. I cannot have time to do homework. Mm -hmm. I gotta, I gotta play some video games right now. (laughs) But yeah, one is obstacles. And then number two here is self judgments. This is my uh, obstacle or reason giving of choice. I have a lot of self judgments in myself, but this is when our minds point out all the ways in which we're not up for the task. It's going to point all the things that happened to the, happened in your past that you failed doing this thing. Or you didn't do so well. It's going to give you a handful of self judgments that leads you to believe that you aren't up for the thing that is in front of you. The third is comparisons. Our mind wants to compare us unfavorably to others who seem to do it better, have more talent or have it easier. That's also one thing. And all these, just remember, are natural, normal, Mm -hmm. and not necessarily healthy. They're unhealthy, unhelpful when we fuse to them. Mm -hmm. But they are just the normal part of life, the normal part of our brain as it goes throughout its day, whatever your brain wants to do. I mean, it'll do whatever it wants at the end of the day. And a lot of these, the reason givings, they're normal. And so if you think, oh my gosh, I've had all four of these or I'm having them right now, it's okay. It's normal. I have these on a day-to-day basis. If you haven't, and if you don't have these, then there's either something wrong with your brain or you have just ascended to the next level and you're not even human. So, I mean, please leave a comment down below. Like, (laughs) please let me know your secret. I'd love to interview you if you're that perfect human to talk to you. Yeah. Um, Yeah. The only thing that I guess I wanted to say with that is that we've said this before on ACT episodes and multiple times throughout our different podcast episodes is that a lot of people, especially that deal with a lot of anxiety and depression, just overall mental health issues, mm-hmm. like to say, I hate my brain or my brain hates mm-hmm. me or I hate my stupid brain the way that it thinks because we see our brain as an enemy mm-hmm. or as something that's trying to take us down with them. That's Conor McGregor that's trying to beat us up. Yeah. But the way that Russ Harris po- paints this picture of our brains in, I don't know if he does this in the confidence gap, but he definitely does it in the happiness trap. He paints the picture of our brains as a really, gl- really good friend. And we might all have a friend like this. It's a good friend who's trying their best to help us out, but in the process of doing so are making things all heck of a lot worse <laughs> we all have I mean, it's in tv yeah. shows it's like we have a lot of experience of that in movies and stuff where there's the well-intentioned friend who's trying to help that makes things worse like sid the sloth and ice age yeah. or um i don't know i'm trying to think of other examples can't think of one right now but input character from show here that is kind of a goofy character that ends up making things worse but yeah. is well-intentioned like, that's no a, don't do it yeah don't help that person you're gonna make it worse exactly and it happens all the time in tvs and movies and it happens yeah. in, it's happened in my life and I've done that before to people. And so that's what your brain is. It's not even a friend. It's just a tool that's trying to help you, trying to keep you alive. We've talked about this a lot. But it's just, it's trying so hard that it's making things worse. And so all of these reason givings are your brain trying to help you, thinking that it's helping you. Yeah. But it's not. It's like a cat bringing you a, or a dog (laughs) bringing you a dead animal, thinking it's giving you a gift, but it's (laughs) not a gift. It's making things a lot worse and it's kind of gross. Yeah. And so I guess the fourth one here, the fourth one here, um, the force the force ah oh, that's a good thing that's a helpful thing um, the fourth reason giving that are the reason giving thing that our brain gives us is predictions our minds try to predict failure rejection or other unpleasant outcomes because as humans we have this unique ability to we think we have this ability to predict the future because of this extremely i don't know extremely creative imaginative brain that we have we think we have this ability to predict the future based off of the past yeah and because we're the only animals that can do that from my understanding we're the only animals that that plan for the future and do things that help us in the future and so in the same type of light we're also the same animals that get stressed out over things in the future that may or may not happen yeah because again it's our brains trying to keep us alive trying to help us but making things worse right and that can be a good thing because i mean that's that part of the brain is something that's carried the human race like this far mm-hmm. you know to adapt and to always think of 
situations that could be harmful. Like Russ Harris likes to take it back to the caveman days. Mm -hmm. You know, if your cousin, Willie, was eaten by a saber-toothed tiger, then if you're in a situation like him or you're in the same area, then your brain would try and predict that same thing Mm -hmm. to keep you alive. And so over you know, these thousands of years or however long it's been that our brains have kind of kept that same thing Mm -hmm. to keep us alive and to make sure that we're kind of in the right place at the right time. So it tries to predict things. And same thing with like mind reading. We try to read other people's minds to, again, keep us safe, protect the ego or whatever. whatever, Yeah, because our brains are, we think our brains are so advanced and they are to a certain point that we think we can do that accurately. But most of the time... It's not because in the grand scheme of things, we're not too far attached from our ancestors a few thousand years ago that were fighting saber-toothed tigers tigers, and that were living in caves and that were living on plains. And so in an evolutionary adaptationary standpoint, we're not very far removed from ancient humans. And so that's why we still have these issues. And now we have to, we couple them with modern day problems like social situations and public speaking and asking a person on a date. <laughs> like, yeah. It's the same type of response to these ancient problems. And that's why it's so problematic. Our brains are responding like there's a saber-toothed tiger in a room, but it's really just a math exam. So yeah. very interesting things. The fight-or-flight response, uh, it's it activates in different ways, different situations for everyone. Like, it's, it's all different. Yeah. But once it activates, it's activated. I mean, it doesn't matter what situation it is. If you have a fear of taking a test... Then boom, there you go. You're Fight probably, or flight. Yeah, you're hooked to some thought of failure or yeah. of something. That it's not going to end up well. Yeah. So anyway, those four reason givings are kind of the four main, the most common like, reasons that our mind tends to hook us on of why we can't do something, why we can't achieve what we want to do, or what have you. Mm-hmm. And now, one thing that actually we we want to talk about here that Russ Harris talks about that we love is uh, he says. This is a direct quote from the book. Okay, and if you can hear Zuko, he's here on my lap, and he's just, he's being an animal. He's being wild. Literally. So Russ Harris says, now if you want your mind, if your mind really were a radio station, okay, back up. What if your mind really were a radio station? For many people, it would sound a little bit like this. Welcome to Radio Triple F. Fear, flaws, and failure. Regular bulletins on everything you need to fear keeping you updated on all your flaws, around-the-clock reminders about failure. We're here for all your day, every day. We're here for you all day, every day. And that tends to be my brain sometimes. Me too. Fears, flaws, and failures all day, every day. And again, it's normal. It's natural. The problem comes when we fuse to those failures, flaws, and uh, what was the third one? Fear? Fear? It fears. was uh, so yeah. fears, flaws, and fears, failures. flaws, and failures. When you fuse to those, or when you fuse to predictions, comparisons, self judgments, and obstacles, like yep. when we start to fuse to those things, that's where it's problematic. And also fusing to positive things as well, like we talked earlier. Yeah, and the important thing here, Russ Harris again says, we're not getting into debates about whether the thought is true or false, because I'm sure some of you have said, well, I am a loser, or I am not very good at this or not very good at that. I am a failure. And that that's that doesn't matter if it's true or if it's not. The question that you want to act, ask yourself when having these thoughts is, if I let this thought dictate my actions, will it help me lead the life I want? If you keep going down this road or if you leave that hook in of failure or of the obstacles in mind or whatever it is, if you leave that there, will th- that thought lead you to live the life that you've always wanted? And most of the time, with fused thoughts, the answer is no, whether that's positive or negative. Yeah, so it's it's important for us to learn how to diffuse from those thoughts because I would say the vast majority of anxiety disorders, just depressive disorders, even like personality disorders as well, is unhealthy fusion to unhelpful thoughts. Yeah. Or unhealthy fusion to helpful thoughts little or positive thoughts like, like self-esteem and stuff like that. And it causes problems. And so we need to learn how to diffuse, to unhook from thoughts. And so, again, another kind of semi-direct quote from the book. We're going to talk about two 
the two main purposes of diffusion. And firstly, it's to enable us to be present, to connect fully with the world around us and engage fully in whatever we are doing. Secondly, it enables us to take effective action. And I'm going to add a little tidbit in there to live a value-based, meaningful life that we want to live. That means the most to us. And so the real purpose of diffusion is this, to be present and take effective action. So we've talked a lot about presence and mindfulness and value-based living a lot on this podcast. And so we're going to harp on it again by going over five exercises to help you diffuse from your fused thoughts, from your unhelpful thoughts. Because, I don't know, for me at least, um, I've gone through a huge paradigm shift in the way that I think about negative thoughts. Um, I've taken the, and I got this kind of from my mom recently too, that um, my mom says she has the it it is what it is mindset. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what cognitive diffusion is. You're going to allow things to exist without trying to to change it or to replace it. And so, yeah, we're going to go over five exercises now of how to diffuse, how to unhook. And uh, yeah. And okay. before before we do that, I want you to think or take a take a step back. Russ Harris says this does this a lot. Take about ten seconds and think to yourself or pay attention to what your mind's telling you right now. It could be saying something like, Oh, this is gonna be dumb. I don't have time to do exercises right now. I don't want to do exercises right now. Or ah, I've heard these before. Ah, don't work. Waste of time. And realize that you are fusing to those thoughts and you're choosing not to do something to diffuse from those. Mm -hmm. And so what we suggest to do is after we list some of these exercises, do them with those thoughts that you're having if you are having like negative thoughts towards wanting to do these exercises or to diffuse from just any thought. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I was say, let's do this. Yeah. Let's choose yep. a negative thought process that we're going to use for all five of these. And I'm going to, I'm going to, for me, I'm going to say probably that I, I tell myself that I'm stupid a lot. Like mm -hmm. that I'm, I don't know why I've always had that. I've just told myself a lot in my life that, man, you're stupid. Like sometimes there's unhealthy words involved in that as well. But a lot, mm -hmm. the basic term is, man, you're really stupid. And so for me, that's the thought that I'm going to try to diffuse from and unhook from. And so all you guys listening, maybe you could think of what's a thought that you tell yourself a lot and do these exercises with that fused thought in mind. Yeah, great idea. So first one here, great one. Um, number one is you say, you would say to yourself inside your brain and inside your mind that I'm having the thought that, or I notice that I'm having the thought. So for me, with the stupid thought, I would say, I'd say I'm, I'm really getting into like a loop where I'm noticing that I'm, I feel bad because I feel stupid. I would say to myself, I'm having the thought that I'm stupid. Or I would say, I notice that I'm having the thought that I feel stupid. Hmm. And you could tell, you could do that a few times because, and you'll notice, I've noticed this in myself and you might notice it in yourself that when you do that, it, it changes the way you feel about that phrase or yeah. about that story or about that hook that's on yeah. you. And one thing that I thought was interesting that Russ Harris says about a lot of his exercises, his unhooking strategies, is that it engages your frontal cortex. Mm. When you do things like this, when you say you notice your certain issue or negative thought, it engages your net, your your prefrontal cortex, which of course is the um, the cognitive, the logical, the decision making. Decision making, making yeah. And it moves these thoughts and feelings from the that ancient part of the brain, the emotional stress response. The amygdala. The amygdala, the fear, mm -hmm. the the anger, the aggression, all the emotions. It moves it from there to the logical decision-making, polite, I guess. I don't, know, I don't know if it's polite, yeah. but the more, I mean, the higher functioning, I should say. Yeah, yeah. It turns you in from an, kind of like a monkey to a human. Like, Caveman to a to modern-day human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to insert smart person. So that's what a lot of these yeah. do. That's what it's meant to do. And so, again, first exercise, I'm having the thought that, I'm stupid, or I notice that I'm having the thought that I'm stupid. And it's important to um, to not say I'm having, um, you don't want to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You don't want to identify with the thought or the phrase. Like I am. Yeah. I, I notice that I am stupid. I notice that yeah. I'm feeling that I'm stupid. You want to say that you're noticing or just having the thought. Yeah. Because that's all they are, just thoughts. Oh, They're yeah. just words on a page. They're like subtitles on a movie. They're just coming and going. Yeah. 
And that's, I mean, if you think about thoughts, really, what are they? They're just words and pictures. That's all they are. Mm -hmm. And when we fuse to the thought, like Austin said at the beginning of the episode, it's as if we're trying to become those thoughts, become those words and pictures. And that's just simply not reality. Not reality. Yeah. And another thing that I thought was interesting from the happiness trap is that our so a lot of our thoughts are just like our dreams, very uncontrollable mm. and sometimes yeah. very weird. Yeah. And like, like sometimes kind of scary too. Yeah. Like inappropriate thought syndrome. Yeah, exactly. And we all have yeah. that. We'll have these intrusive thoughts. Like where'd that come from? Like, yeah. Or like, man, you're an idiot. Or like for me, it's the intrusive self judgments. That's how I said earlier. Like, where did that come from? Why would I even feel that way? And so they're uncontrollable. And so why should we believe them? And that's what unhooking is all about. Yeah. And why try and fight it? Yeah, right too. Yeah, no point in trying to fight it. Number two is singing thoughts. It's a good one. Now, these are kind of funny and they're weird, but they really do have an effect. And, you know, if they're going to be effective for you or not, you could just got to try them. And you, again, you could be having the thought, man, this is real stupid or these suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, those are normal. Okay, that's okay. And I don't care what your mind is saying, but try and diffuse from them and just give it a try because you never know if it's going to actually work or not for you unless yeah. you try it. And so singing thoughts is actually really easy. You'd pick what you're struggling with, what you're fused with, like in Austin's case, I'm stupid. Mm -hmm. And you sing that thought to a tune of whatever you want. Usually like happy birthday or I'm something really, really stupid. I am really stupid. I'm really, really stupid. I'm really stupid. <laughs> just like that. Yeah, and so you see what that does is it just creates space again mm -hmm. for you to realize that, okay, these really are just words and just pictures, and I don't have to identify with the way I'm yeah. feeling or thinking, and it's okay. I, I just want to point out again what Enoch said, and it's it's to create space. It's not to pretend those feelings aren't real. Because one thing that is important to say is that if you're having the thought that you're stupid, or let's say you're having the thought that you're fat, that could be true. And it's important to listen to those thoughts a little bit. Because if you're having the thought that you're fat, maybe you're unhealthy and you need to lose some weight because you want to live your life to be there to see your grandchildren and yeah. to live with your wife. And if, for me, if I'm having the thought that I'm stupid, maybe it's because I need to study more. Like maybe I'm feeling that I'm stupid because I didn't pass an exam. And if I just create space with that thought that I'm stupid and just live my life um, pretending that thought didn't exist, then I'm probably going to fail the next exam. It's good to listen to these thoughts, but you need to create space from them so they don't cause anxiety, depression, and get you into a worse spot, if that makes sense. Yeah, because so. remember, the whole point of these aren't to get rid of the thought. Mm -hmm. Like in CBT, you want to get rid of the thought and replace it with a positive one. That's not what you're trying to do here. You're trying to simply just create space and just let that thought be there. And like we said here before we uh, went through these exercises, the purpose of diffusion, Russ Harris says, is to be present and to take effective action. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say to get rid of it. He doesn't say to replace it with the positive one. It's just to be present, bring yourself to the moment, and then to take action based on your values. Again, and go, another thing, like another quote, is if I let this thought detect, dictate my actions, will it lead me to the life I want? Mm -hmm. And I can't properly let the thought I'm stupid dictate my life for, like, if it's, if I'm fused to it and I don't understand what it's really trying to tell me. Because if I create enough space from that thought and truly see what it is, it could just be an intrusive thought that came out of nowhere. Yeah. Or it could be a thought um, signaling me that there's something wrong, like something really wrong here that I need to work on. Because yeah. it's out of line of my values. And when I create that space and see what that message really has to say for me, I can let I can choose which way I'm going to dictate my life, which way I'm going to take my life. But you can't do that if you're just fused to your thoughts and you don't have that space. So again, not, not about replacing, not about changing. It's about getting that space to take effective action. So number three, the third exercise, silly voices. This one's an interesting one. I thought this was awesome. Oh, baby, it is. Oh, it's it's so uh, great. <laughs> um, it's again just to create space it's not to trivialize or to make fun of your thoughts or to pretend they don't exist it's to create space because that's one thing that might happen to some people well, if I just if I just sing my problems or if I make silly voices out of my problems like they're real problems I want to 
Treat them as such. And this isn't to trivialize them or to make fun of them. It's to create space so you can take proper action. Mm -hmm. So silly voices, what does that mean? It's to just repeat the phrase or the word or the sentence that you're telling yourself, the story you're telling yourself or your brain's telling you in some type of silly voice. Think of a cartoon character like Mickey or Minnie Mouse, Goofy, um, or some type of funny celebrity. Like I thought, I did this earlier today. I tried it out. I did, I repeated like an intrusive, unwanted thought in the voice of Carl Weezer from yes. Jimmy Neutron. Do it. And I'm going to try. I might get nervous, but it was, um, <laughs> what, what did I mess it up? It was, um, I was at work and I messed something up and I said kind of that I'm stupid. I'm like a mm. failure. So I, I repeated it. I was, man, you're such a failure. You shouldn't have done that. You're so stupid. And as I did that, <laughs> that's so good. And as I did so that, good. I chuckled a little bit and I laughed like, okay, like I, I took, I got that space that I needed to be like, okay, it's really not a big deal. Yeah. Like, yeah, the polish isn't perfect on this here granite. That's what I do. Like right now I have a part-time job. I polish stone and it's, it's a job. It's a craftsman. It's, I'm a craftsman. I'm a blue collar <laughs> worker on my part-time making money. But yeah, I messed up a little <laughs> bit of the polish, like on the edge. It was a little bit further than I wanted it to be. And I just felt so stupid because like, I should know this. I'm stupid. Yeah. Like you've been doing this for three weeks, literally just three <laughs> weeks. But I did the Carl Weezer voice and it helped. Like it honestly yeah. helped me realize, okay, it's not that bad. Like, yeah, yeah, I need to get better at this, but I'm still new. And like, I, get, I was able to give myself a little grace all because that silly voice gave me a little bit of space yeah. from my problem. And yeah. I thought this, I'm going to do Carl Weezer and probably Donald Trump, probably my two big voices yeah. because those voices are just so ridiculous to me. And so just to, <laughs> for silly voices... Choose two or maybe a few voices that you can pull from that you just think are ridiculous. Maybe a chipmunk voice or goofy mm. or like Ellen DeGeneres. I don't know. A voice that you find <laughs> just or Kronk from Emperor's New Groove. Yeah, a voice buddy. that you just find a little bit silly yeah. that you can repeat to yourself. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just in your brain. Or you can do it out loud if you want to. Like I just yeah. did. But it, it again helps you make that space to give yourself a little bit of grace. I love that one. It's hilarious. It's so funny. And honestly... In all of this, adding a sense of humor is just, it helps a ton. It helps me. I know it helps me. Yeah. It's beautiful. Humor's great. Obviously, there is a time and a place for it, but I think, in a sense, there can always be a time and place for a mm. little bit of humor. Always. Every, I think yeah. the humor is the spice of life. And so, yeah. 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 It's great. So, the fourth exercise here, this one's more for visual learners. It's the computer screen. Now, you can literally do this on a computer mm -hmm. or you can visualize it, whatever you want to do. Whatever works best for you. So computer screen, write your fused thought on the computer. Like, we're sticking with the thought, I'm stupid. Or, yeah, I'm stupid. Write that down on the computer. Type it down. And now what you're going to do is right now it's in just regular font or Times New Roman or whatever font is normal to you. And the color's black. Now play around with it. Change it to different colors, change every word, like make every word a different color, change the sizes of the words. You know how that one uh, SpongeBob meme that came out a while ago, how they upper um, capitalize every other letter? Oh, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So you could do something like that and <laughs> <That's> <laughs> make a silly voice out of it or whatever. And this is just, again, to help you realize that what you have written down there, if it's I'm stupid, is just a word and it's just a little picture that's all it is and it gives you that power to take effective action and not be all caught up not to be fused with that thought yeah so that's the computer screen yeah doesn't work super well for me but if you're a more visual person like yeah. it could work beautifully especially if you're actually doing it on a computer because then you're truly being present with that thought and you can see it with your actual eyes and that could be another big thing just seeing that thought that thought or phrase typed out in front of you could be just enough to unhook from it. So, and I was actually going to toss number five back to Enoch because I'm not, I don't remember the best way to explain it. So if you wouldn't mind doing this one too, because yeah. I want to make sure the audience, because I, I have a good idea of how to do it, but I want to make sure the people get what they need. <laughs> <laughs> get what they need, not yeah. what they want. Because <laughs> yeah. we, <laughs> we all know we want more Austin in our lives. Yeah. But, so this one's the two hands exercise. Now, if you're driving, don't do this. But if you aren't driving and you have some time, then actually do this right now. So what you're going to do is put your hands out in front of you, palms facing up, and I want you to slowly bring your hands closer to your face 
until they're completely over your face. And keep your eyes open. And can you see? I mean, odds are, like right now, I can see. You can see through the little gaps little between bit. your fingers. To the sides a little bit too, yeah. yeah. To the sides a little bit, but it's not really as effective. And so now I want you to slowly remove your hands from your face. And now look around. You can obviously see a lot more, right? And so your hands are like your thoughts. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. Where when we're fused with them, it's as if our hands are right in front of our face. We can still kind of move around, do some things, but it limits what we can do when we're fused to those thoughts. And when we diffuse from those thoughts, um, are like, you know, like your hands, they're still there, mm -hmm. right? But you can see a lot more and you can do a lot more because you have, I mean, your hands. You can even use your thoughts and your ideas and stuff to do amazing things. And this is actually one of my favorite ones. And you can literally do this when you're fused to a thought. Is picture that thought on your hands, bring it up to your face, and then slowly release it and bring them down in front of you. And realize that you don't have to get rid of them. They're there. They're still in your hands. They're yeah. still in your hands but you can go about your day and live a value-based life and do what you want. Be the person that you've always wanted to be. You don't have to let these thoughts cloud your vision and dictate what you do. Yeah. And another great analogy that I kind of came up with that semi comes from the happiness trap is like picture yourself holding a book maybe. And it's like open up to a few pages and the message or the sentence or the phrase that is repeating to you is on that page it's on those pages right in front of you and imagine just holding that those pages right up against your eyes so that's all you can think about that's all you're focusing on yeah to the point where almost you don't truly understand the problem it's blurred and you don't really understand it but if you can just put it down in your lap and read it and then you can truly understand what it is and what your brain's trying to tell you maybe just like you do with any other book you can learn a lesson from it you can pull something out of it just like any other textbook. Hmm. And so, I like that one. Um, yeah, it's kind of a, it kind of points us back to that our negative thoughts aren't always our enemy. Sometimes they can be our friend and they're trying to teach us something. And so, yeah, again, move that book away from your face, put it down in your lap, metaphorically, of course, and try to learn from what that thought is telling you, what's something that I can prove upon or something I can stop doing. Be curious about it. Yeah, like lean into it a little bit instead of trying to avoid it or fight it or be scared of it. What is, what is this thought I'm stupid trying to tell me? Like, why would I possibly be having this? Is there some type of trauma that I need to get worked out? Is mm -hmm. there, is it because I'm not studying enough or not reading enough, like how I want to read? Or is it because I'm not doing enough curiosity Google searches like I like to do? <laughs> like how I think of a random thing in Google search and learn about it. There's a, I think there's a lesson to be learned in most negative thoughts. Yeah. And so that, that helped me understand this last, last exercise is the, I call it the book analogy, maybe, or the book Perfect. exercise. Coined by Austin. Coined That's by great. Austin. <laughs> um, and it's kind of semi-paraphrased um, from The Happiness Trap, but he doesn't use the message from the book the way that I kind of did. But it's just like the two hands thing. It's so close to your face that you can't truly understand what's going on. You can't yeah. see what's in front of you, and you can't lean into the things that you really care about. You can't even learn from it. So that's the fifth exercise. I guess part B of yeah. number five. <laughs> 5B. The 5B. And as we were talking, as we were going through these exercises, what was your, what was your mind telling you? That these are dumb? Mm -hmm. What were you fused to? Now go ahead. Defuse from these. Choose an exercise. <laughs> and choose an exercise. Yeah. Do it. And uh, it takes practice. It really does. And so these are just some basic ideas. Some simple exercises you can do. But the, there are three main steps to diffusion. And you can come up with your own, like Austin did with the book analogy. Mm -hmm. So the main, the main three steps that diffusion has is number one is you notice it. You need to notice the thought you're fused with. That's what we say a lot here on this podcast is that recognition, noticing is the first step to recovery, mm -hmm. is the first step to change. With anything. Yeah, with anything in life. Number two is you name it. And that's kind of what these, these exercises we just talked about do. Like we, we named the thought by saying it. Or like the first one, you can say, I'm having the thought that I feel stupid. Or I notice I'm having the thought that I am feeling dumb. Or whatever it is. So one, notice. Two, name it. Three, neutralize it. 
And you can do that in really any way you want. But through an analogy, through physically doing something with your hands or with a book, singing it, silly voices, whatever you come up with, whatever works for you, then do it. I mean, there's no wrong answer here. Yeah, really there isn't. And um, I think the little disclaimer we, we talked about before we started this episode is neutralize does not mean get rid of. We've said that a yes. bunch of times on this episode. Neutralizing it is one of those five exercises to diffuse from it. Because noticing it and naming it helps you understand it. And then neutralizing it helps you create space from it to drop the rope, to get out of the ring, to... Um, throw up the white flag on the war not the white flag in war but like stepping step out, of, out. Yeah. there's literally just stepping out of the war and shout out to tony overbay we talked about him a lot one of the first analogies i ever heard about acceptance of commitment therapy was if it's like setting up a lawn chair on a hill while a battle is raging and the battle is the negative thoughts that you don't like and the hill is your values where you get to just be there and experience the war and watch it and notice that it's there but you're still living your life the way you want to live it so yeah, neutralizing is not getting rid of, it's not replacing. This isn't CBT. Um, this is ACT because <laughs> it's superior. <laughs> what? Zuko, why'd you say that? Um, he's a dog. He doesn't know what he's talking yeah. about. Um, he's yeah. actually pretty smart though. <laughs> um, so yeah. But one thing I do want to point out is that negative thoughts, I guess thoughts in general, well, we'll say negative thoughts. Negative thoughts or unhelpful thoughts are not bad. Mm -hmm. It's simply the way we interact with them, which makes it an issue. And so we tend to do that when we have like a random thought that is deemed bad in quote, in quotations or unhelpful. Um, we tend to freak out like, oh my gosh, I'm having this bad thought. What am I doing? Am I, I messed up? But you're not. You're totally normal. And that thought isn't necessarily bad or unhelpful. If you react to it in a healthy and positive way. I hope that makes sense. It does to me. Yeah, it's, it's not your thoughts that hurt you. It's the way you react to them that have, have a negative effect. And so yeah. if anything, uh, you're not a bad human being. You're not inferior, lesser than, or whatever. Whatever thoughts you tend to fuse to most, you're not that. You're simply human. You're normal. And it's totally okay. Remember, they're just thoughts. They're just pictures and words, and that's literally all they are. And you have a choice to react to them, uh, or I guess respond to them. You have a choice to either react or respond in a healthy or unhealthy way. Yep. Yeah. Amen. I really don't have much to add to that. That's that's cognitive diffusion. That's cognitive right. diffusion. Yeah, I hope you learned something new, because, I mean, Austin and I are learning something new, stuff new. Stuff new. We're stuff learning stuff new, new <laughs> every day. And it's a lot of fun, to, especially to try these out and find something that works for us. It's really exciting. And you can see that you really do have power over your life. You mm -hmm. don't have to let these silly thoughts run your life. And you don't have to be inside this war. You don't have to engage in the war. You can just sit back and do what you want to do, mm -hmm. really. And again, emphasis on practice. It does take practice. Practice doesn't make perfect. That's kind of silly. Practice just makes improvement. And because you'll never be perfect at it. No such thing. No such perfect thing. Perfect is not a thing, objectively. Yeah, it's really not. And so when you practice, you'll be getting better at noticing your thoughts and diffusing from them. And you'll be able to live a more happier, more fulfilled life. And enjoy it. Yeah. Eventually, like going back to the original fish analogy... At first, you might still take some of the bait. You might get hooked every now and then, and you'll 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 unhook. You'll get back in the river, and you'll keep going. Eventually, you might get to a point where you can recognize things before you even get hooked. You can start to recognize thoughts before they even really start to grip you. And that again yeah. comes with practice. But you will get hooked a lot. You're gonna you're gonna believe that what looks like a water bug coming down the stream, and you're gonna take it. Again, it's just me catching you on a. <laughs> <laughs> on a hare's hare's ear nymph rig i'm sorry i'm really good at fishing <laughs> no it's gonna happen you're gonna get hooked a lot in your life because our, okay. our brains are just they're silly and we have these constant they have constantly shifting tactics to hook us because again they're yeah. just trying to protect us trying to keep us alive in these situations and that, they're good at it they're darn good that's why humans are at the top of the food chain it's why we live the way we live it's where it's how we become these apex um animals on the earth because of how 
good our brains are at keeping us alive and making us more intelligent than the other animals. Brains have thousands of years of experience at hooking yeah. us. And so, again, like Enoch said, practice and dedication will be the key to learning how to diffuse. Yeah. So we hope you have a great week and taking us out, as always, it's a privilege to be taken out by the great, the wonderful, the talented, the just amazing, the awesome, the illustrious, illustrious <laughs> <laughs> Danny D. Have a good week. Thanks, guys. What about, what about therapy? 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 Yeah. What about, what about therapy? 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 Yeah.